How many times have you set out on a goal, set out to accomplish something, and then realized about halfway in that as much as you want to achieve the goal, as much as you want to accomplish this thing, it's the daily stuff that wears you out. Well, yesterday we talked about that a little bit. We talked about how you got to be able to do the daily stuff, the daily disciplines in order to accomplish the big goal. So today I wanna to kinda of set a framework for you to do that. And there are really three primary elements to doing every day what it takes to be successful in whatever it is. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you want to write a book or that you want to lose 50 pounds or that you want to compete at a world-class level in the shot put. There are some very specific things that are indicated by those who have been successful at that goal, whatever that goal is. When you apply the same practices that they apply, remember from yesterday, practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. So there are three things that you've got to filter all of their successes through in order to apply them to your life. And those three things are the three things written on the board. And so I've used the acronym FAD because for a lot of people, success seems to be a passing fad. I, I heard someone on an interview earlier say that uh, they had read a lot of Tony Robbins books and even been to some of his seminars and much of his stuff worked for like a year and a half and then it wore off. And when you ask him that question, why is it that it works for a year and a half and then it wears off? The answer is simple, and that is, if it was a fad in your life, it was just a, a season in your life, it was just a, a thing, one thing you wanted to accomplish in your life. Once you've got that one thing done, you feel like you're finished. You've got to stick with the program, with the ideas, with the plans that actually pay off. You've got to continue to do what worked this time because the same process will work again next time. If it doesn't work every time, then it may be a fad. But these three things, if you'll apply these three things, and they fit with the uh, acrostic fad, if you will apply these three things to everything, whether it's writing a book, riding a bicycle instead of writing a book, but riding a bicycle, if it's uh, being a world-class soccer player, or a world-class violinist or celloist, a world-class pianist, if there's something that you want to do at the highest level possible, you've got to apply these three rules. Number one is focus. There's got to be time in your life, time in your day, that you block out everything else and you focus only on that. If the only amount of time that you can come up with to write a book, write a blog, create a new video, uh, become a soccer player, become a better soccer player, become a world-class soccer player, if the only time that you can eke out of your entire life to accomplish that is an hour and a half on Monday mornings, then that hour and a half on Monday mornings better be absolute focus. You turn your phone off, you turn the music off, you disconnect yourself from friends and family, you isolate yourself if you have to. If that means that you're in the gym and you're doing nothing but kicking the ball against the wall, if that means that you're sitting in your closet with your violin or your cello and all you're doing is playing the scales and playing the scales and playing the scales and playing the scales and playing the scales, if that means that you take your laptop and you disconnect from Wi-Fi and you disconnect from Messenger and you have no way to contact anybody or nobody has a way to contact you except you and your writing and you go sit on the side of a cliff somewhere with your laptop and you write for an hour and a half, then that's what you need to do. But you've got to be focused, absolute focused on what you're trying to accomplish. You've got to be able to pull those words together. Now, I've written probably close to 50,000 words since January probably close to 15,000 of those words have been for work. And about 25 to 30,000 have been between blogs and Facebook posts and things of that nature, things that I do for other people. And about 10,000 of those have been applied toward the book that I've been working on for now 14 years. I have not been as isolated to work on that project. I'm not certain that it's completely ready yet, but it's really, really close. And I do feel like a lot of the content of it is ready to just flow the minute I isolate myself to do that. So I may just have to take a weekend away, go to the lodge down in Central Texas and, and just write. And that means unplugging from everybody because you can't get a phone signal there. That's awesome. The focus being concentrated on the accomplishment that you set in front of you. 
So if that accomplishment is to practice scales 42 times before you quit, to kick the ball against the wall and never miss its rebound, to throw 53 free throws or 95 free throws or 150 free throws or whatever it is until you don't miss again. If that's what you've chosen to do, then you've got to focus on that at the expense of everything else. Now, here's something you've got to know about focus, especially for people with ADD or other types of attention deficits. And sometimes OCD kind of has its own fixation with attention as well. Sometimes those go together. And I'm not a clinical psychologist, so I'm not going to try to go too deep into that. But the ability to focus for some people is harder than it is for others. That doesn't make it less necessary. It doesn't mean just because it's a harder challenge for you to focus than it is for someone else to focus that you can abandon the idea of focus. You still must focus. Now, I want you to think for a moment about using a pair of binoculars. If you're watching a football game or a soccer game from high in the stadium, or you're watching the rocket launches, or you're watching fireworks and you're using binoculars, it's real easy to pick the binoculars up and put them to your eye. But it doesn't mean that what you're gonna see through there is going to be in focus. So it may take a minute to get the binoculars through your eyes, adjust the width of the lenses to be able to match up with your pupils so that you let in the maximum amount of light. Then you may have to adjust the focus and actually move the lenses in relationship to each other until the thing that you're looking at pulls into focus. Now as you're doing that, there's something else happening. And that is that you're losing focus on everything else around you. By concentrating on that one thing, by narrowing your worldview, by narrowing your ability to see other things for the time being, you will increase your ability to do the work that you're trying to do. But you will also minimize your ability to respond to other things around you. So don't do that at the expense of relationships that demand your attention, like your children or your spouse or your job. If focus is dedicated to a certain time of the day. I'm gonna do 50 push-ups every day. I'm gonna do 25 uh, wind sprints every day. I'm gonna kick the soccer ball against the wall 55 times every day. Pick that time, set aside that time, make an appointment for yourself, and then let other people know that might want your attention, that your focus is right here. And then, number two, you've gotta pay attention to it. It's real easy to block yourself out. It's real easy to, and I say that, for some people it's not. Easy to isolate yourself, but for most people it's easy. Once you pick that time, and you pick the work that you're gonna do in that time, whether it's the soccer ball, or the violin, or the cello, or the writing, or the video, whatever it is that you're gonna do in that time, it's easy to set aside the time, but it's also easy to get into that time once you've made the only thing in front of you that, and then lose attention in your mind. It's not the distractions around you. It's not the kids running back and forth in front of you in the computer screen. It's not the, the other distractions of noise and sound around you that are costing you to not succeed at this. It's your attention. It's the mental clarity. It's the focus inside your mind. How much attention are you paying to that thing? Now, I love the old phrase, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if your focus, if your practice, if your attention is at a high level, then your performance will also be at a high level. If your focus is scattered, if your attention is not devoted, then neither will your final performance be. So whatever it is that your end result is desired to be, you can count on it being no better than the one and a half hours or the one hour or the 25 minutes that you have set aside the time that you have devoted to this practice. The daily discipline, that's our next word, the daily discipline necessary to achieve that goal, to get that result, to win that award, to, to get that trophy, to finish that book. What's necessary to pull that off is focus, attention, and discipline. And if you can't focus, meaning remove all other distractions, pay attention only on what you're working on. Don't allow distractions of the mind, don't allow the emotions of your body, don't allow the chemicals in your body force you to do something else. There are a lot of people who will simply say, I don't feel like doing it today. Well, that's where the discipline comes in. You've got to focus, you've got to pay attention, you've got to be disciplined. If you don't have the discipline to get up and get at it, if you don't have the discipline to do it this time and do it even when it's not fun and do it when it doesn't feel good and do it when you're in pain and do you follow me? If you don't have the discipline to cause you to do it, when it's not enjoyable, 
when it's not pleasurable, when it's not fun, then you won't have the discipline to complete it. And the win won't feel nearly as good because there will be no win if you don't have the discipline to complete. An incomplete project doesn't get a trophy. A half-finished book doesn't get published. A half-finished book that never gets published never makes the bestsellers list. So if your goal is to be a bestseller, you've got to finish writing the book. You've got to finish editing the book. You've got to get it off to the editor. You've got to get it through the publishing process. You've got to get it printed. You've got to get it on the shelf. Then you can have a bestseller. But none of that happens until you have the discipline to show up in your writing spot with your headphones on, with the world isolated away from you, where you're paying attention to the research that you've done over the course of the week and you're applying it to what you're doing right now. So you're focused on writing, you're paying attention to your writing, you've disciplined yourself to your writing and nothing else is gonna distract you for that moment. Now there are a lot of people who have success as a fad. They follow someone else's formula, they run through all the steps and it's just like baking a cake. But if you follow the recipe for the cake and you get it out of the oven and then you eat the cake, You have to start the process over again to have another cake. If you want a lifetime of cakes, you can't make one cake. You've got to learn the discipline. You've got to learn the habit. If you want a book finished, you can't just write a page or a chapter. You've got to write multiple pages, multiple chapters on a regular basis. And if you do, spin off a great book and it sells phenomenally. You can't live on that one book forever. Your life is going to develop. Your friends are going to develop. Your family is going to develop. The needs of society are going to develop. And as they evolve, you've got to have something else to say. Not just one book, one chapter, one page. But again and again and again, someone asked John Maxwell one time, how do you write 85 books? He said one word at a time. Well, that's not a joke. That's reality. And the same will be true for you. If you want to write a book or 85 books, it's one word at a time. It takes focus, it takes attention, it takes discipline, and it takes doing those things over and over and over again. Maybe your goal is a little more personal. It's a little more spiritual. Maybe it's a little more, uh, you want to be oriented to the word well. If you want to be a great preacher or teacher one day, know your content, know your subject, study your subject, study it inside and out. Study it with people who disagree with you. Test your theories. I, I, I dare you to go out there and throw them on Facebook. Whatever your theory is, whatever you're studying, psychology, music, mathematics, uh, Christianity, Muslim beliefs, whatever it is, whatever you're studying, share it with the world and see what happens. Because if you're saying something and it's not resonating with the crowd, if it's not resonating with your audience, you're either saying the wrong thing or you're speaking to the wrong audience. When it resonates with the audience, it's also gonna create some friction. There are going to be some people in your life, they're going to hear what you have to say and they're like, wow, where'd you come up with that nonsense? Or they're going to hear it and they're going to go, I disagree just a little bit because I really think it's more like this. Both of those can be beneficial to you if you have focus, attention, and discipline. If you know where your sources are, if you know what your content is really about, if you know why you're writing the book that you're writing, other people's opinions will feed you and strengthen you and sharpen you. If you're kicking that ball against the wall and kicking the ball against the wall and kicking the ball against the wall, that's a great idea to get the discipline and the reaction and the rebound and be ready to, to be there for it. If you're shooting free throws, all of those things are great and they will make you very, very good at what you're doing because you get more of what you focus on. So if you're focused on that, that ball response and, and getting in the same place every time, that's awesome. If you're focused on being able to hit every free throw every single time, that's awesome. You're going to get more of what you focus on. But sometimes you've got to add a competitor into the mix. In order to go to the next level, you've got to have a little pushback. You're going to have to discipline yourself to know that when I reach a certain level of accomplishment, then I've got to hand it off or invite in would-be naysayers, people who may disagree with me. When you finish a good book, and you finish writing the whole thing, then you've got to hand it off to the editor and know they're going to trim probably 30 to 50% of it. And they're going to come back to you and go, what did you mean by this? And I don't understand this statement. And in your head, it may be clear, but in the reader's head, it is not. You can save yourself a little bit of that pain by trust, testing those ideas on friends around you and family around you as you go along. So if you write a new chapter and it's 12 pages long, take two or three pages and send it to five or six people and let them tell you, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, well, does it not, not make any sense because you're missing the other 11 pages? Or does it not make any sense because what's on that page is confusing? And if you can 
delineate between those two, you can master the craft of your writing at a higher level. It's very important to know that even out of context, what you say makes sense. That it's a simplified idea, that it's not so extrapolated that you have to have five pages to explain it. If what you're trying to say can't be understood in the page or the paragraph it's written in, it might be a challenge for other people to stay on board with it because America and the rest of the world, their attention span is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. <clears throat> if your free throws are incredible and you've never missed one out of 150 tries, and then you turn on the dryer buzzer, and all of a sudden you can't hit a single one, or you turn on some fake applause behind you and you miss every one you throw, then you probably need to shoot in front of a crowd for a while and get used to that crowd. Because whether you're talking about high school or college or the NBA, once you get in the NBA, everybody's going to be screaming and yelling. And many of them will be screaming for you to miss. Life's pressures are going to test your focus. Life's pressures are going to test your attention. And just the reality of being a human will test your discipline. If you want to see that your success is not some passing fad, but become something that you can hang your hat on and go back to again and again and again, I want you to begin now to apply these three things, focus, attention, and discipline. If you'll apply those, you have a chance to see your successes, even the small ones, continue to grow into something greater. I'm J. Lauren Norris, and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.